Okay, let's explore some additional functions, one of which is quite simple to use and quite powerful, and that is the whole idea of normalizing your data. Let's talk about and demonstrate how to do that. We've seen in other videos how easy it is to classify data and how easy it is to make different kinds of maps, ranging from single symbol maps, as we've got here, to graduated color maps, to graduated symbol maps, pie chart maps, dot density maps, and more. Let's talk about something that is fundamental to spatial analysis and to statistics in general, and that is normalizing data. In this case, we've got some state populations here. So what we can do here is we can make a quick map showing the population of the states in 2010. There it is. Okay, well, what if I want to know the change in population from, let's say, 2010 uh, from the 10 years before, from the year 2000? Well, that's easy to do because we've got this normalization field. What, th what that does is it divides whatever value you have in the, in the value field by the value that's in the normalization field. So if we divide population 2010 by population 2000, hmm, let's see what that gives us. If we think about it, if a state had, let's say, 10 million people in 2010 and only 5 million people in 2000, we'd, div we'd be dividing 10 by 5. So 2 would be our result. So a positive number over 1 would indicate that the state is growing in population. A number less than one means the state is declining in population. It looks like we do have at least one state that's declining in population. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is the growth. It indicates the growth, doesn't it? Because these states are most rapidly increasing in population out west and down south in Texas, as well as some southeast. And these states up here are either growing very slowly or else they're decreasing in population. I'm really interested in that state that decreased in population or states, so I think I'll go over here and set my range to 1 for the breakpoint. That means that whatever state here that I've got symbolized in yellow will indicate to me that the state decreased in population, right? Because we're dividing 2010 by 2000. Okay, let's go ahead and find out which one that was. Ah, okay, it looks like it was Michigan. So if we hit the identify button, go up here to Michigan and pull up the attributes for Michigan. Let's go ahead and investigate the data. In 2000, the population was 9.938 million. In 2010, it was 9.88 million. So it looks like Michigan is the only one, according to this data set from census data 2000 and 2010, that decreased in population. Why is that? What were the economic variables that are impacting the state? What were the other variables that impacted the state over that period of time? Why did it decrease? If we went back to the 1940s and 50s, maybe the height of the in-migration due to automobiles, uh, we might be able to see a whole different story. In fact, let's do that. It's pretty easy to do, and we'll be able to use the same procedures we just explored. So let's go ahead and divide the 1960 population by the 1950 population try to get a handle on in-migration to Michigan. Okay, so 1960 divided by 1950. Looks like there's even some states that decreased during the 1950s, because I do have some states less than one. And similar to what I was doing before, let's go ahead and set the breakpoint to one. And that way, I've got some states that are decreasing. I could even change the label here, decreasing in 1950s. Okay and uh, the rest are increasing. And let's make that symbol yellow, just so it will stand out. All right, so it looks like during the 1950s, a couple of South Central states, Arkansas and Mississippi, how do I know that? Can't I label these? Okay, Arkansas and Mississippi decreased in population, while, oh, it looks like also West Virginia while other states increased in population. So it confirms our hypothesis. Let's go ahead and turn those labels off. That we had a radically different situation back in the 1950s. Wow, look at Florida. Quite a bit of increase in the 1950s. The West as well, as we see today. But there were some 
things going on in the 50s that were different from today. How could we dig into the historical and geographic components of that change? Well, GIS allows us to open the door to inquiry. Now remember with this normalization tool, you just need to use some caution. Make sure you're dividing apples and apples. Uh, for example, if you've got some census data, uh, for example, let's say you've got um, females in the value field and then you've got, let's say, mobile homes in the normalization field. In other words, you've got population in the value field and in your normalization field you've got uh, housing units, specifically mobile homes. If you divide females by mobile homes, the computer, you know, being a computer, it'll do whatever you specify, but you're not, you're, well, in this case, you're dividing apples by oranges. So the result is not females in mobile homes. You see what I mean? So you'd need to use caution and really understand what your data is, uh, is telling you, and also where it was gathered from and who gathered it and why it was gathered. So know your data and use caution when you're uh, dividing things. Uh, and any type of data analysis, you, need to, you really need to understand your data. Okay, but that being said, the normalization function is really powerful and wonderful. What about population 1850 divided by 1840? Now, why are we going in reverse? Why can't we divide 1840 by 1850? Well, we could. We'd get different numbers. Just as long as you understand what those numbers are indicating, you're fine. Um, in this case, if we divide the... the the later year by the prior year, by the prior census year, that is, um, we're going to see a negative number if a state decreased. If we go the opposite, we're going to see a negative number uh, if it increased. So it's a little bit easier in my mind to go this way. All right, it looks like in the 1840s we didn't have any state that decreased in population. We had some states that increased uh, a huge amount, um, nine times. So let's go ahead and uh, make those, um, how about some sort of a hatch pattern, uh, really make them stand out. Okay, so these are the fastest growing states in the 1840s. And, uh, okay, why don't we have anything out here? Well, there weren't, there, those states weren't existing in, 18, in the 1840s. And so, ah, so it looks like Wisconsin increased the most in the 1840s. Makes sense, Wisconsin became a state in 1848. And you could look back in time and look at when states actually became states. That probably coincided in many cases with their most rapid growth. So let's go ahead and change this to the 1830s now. So I'm going to go to 1840 divided by 1830. And let's go to a five classification method here. And let's once again make this fastest growing one some sort of hatch pattern. And OK. Another variable that we've got in here is something that I classified uh, and created, and that is the change year by year. So if we, can, if we map change any particular year, we don't want to normalize it because we don't want to divide a rate of change by a total population. So this is a case where normalization is not suitable because I already have a change component inside this variable. Okay, so here's the change during the 1930s. Uh, interesting. We've got some states that, that obviously it decreased quite a bit here. 7% is what this is. Uh, we've got another state on the high end that increased 36%. Let's go ahead and, and change that. And you know what? I think I want to make my, I want to make my states that that decreased. I'm going to once again do what I did before and I'm going to make a a zero here. In this case now we've got uh, states that decreased. It's going to be let's make that a bright yellow and then let's make this one a sort of a pale yellow. Okay so we've got yellows for the decreasing states in the 30s and we've got reds for the increasing. Okay well I've got the Dust Bowl right there don't I? I also have an interesting situation over here in Vermont. What went on in Vermont during the 1930s? Let's go ahead and hit the Identify button and just dig into the data a bit more. So 1930 population of Vermont, 359,000. And look, 1940, 359,000. Looks like it only lost 400 people. Okay, so it decreased slightly. However, if we go over, to, over here, 
to these states. We'll take a look at Kansas. In 1930, it had 1.88 million. In 1940, it had 1.80 million. So looking at these decimal places here, going from, looks like it lost a good 80,000 people in the 1930s. What about Oklahoma? Scroll down there, 1930 it had 2.396 million, in 1940 2.336 million, so oh it looks like 60,000 people left Oklahoma during that those years. Fascinating. Okay, so we've done some simple but powerful things here. We have normalized and symbolized and started asking some questions about the data, some of which we could answer immediately, others we'll have to do a little bit more research. But that is the essence of geographic inquiry, asking questions, gathering your data, investigating your data, analyzing your data, and then displaying your data, and then acting on that and asking new questions. Thanks.